Our lesson today <coughs> is to be able to solve polynomial equations in standard form. In order to <coughs> solve polynomial equations, we have to use the zero product property. A polynomial is in factored form when it is written as the product of factors. So we have standard form here where we have the order of the decreasing powers of the variable. <coughs> and then we have factor form. Right? So x squared plus 2x would be standard form. x times the quantity x plus 2 would be factored form. If you look at the trinomial, x squared plus 5x minus 24, standard form. The factor form would be uh, x minus 3 times uh, the quantity x plus 8. <coughs> when one side of an equation is a polynomial in factored form, the other side is zero. Use the zero product property to solve the polynomial equation. <coughs> the solutions of equation are also called its roots. If the product of two real numbers is zero, then at least one of the numbers is zero. So, Let's take a look at some examples. So we have 2x squared, 2x times the quantity x minus 4. So that means either 2 times x is equal to 0, or <coughs> x minus 4. Oops, we don't need the parentheses. Or x minus 4 is going to be equal to 0. So we solve each of these two equations. So the first equation we divide by 2. Get an answer of x is equal to 0 because 0 divided by 2 is 0. Over here we'd add 4 to both sides of the equation. And we wind up with uh, x is equal to 4. So, so x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 4. So the roots of this equation are x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 4. Our next example, we have x minus 3 times uh, x minus 9. Once again, we write two equations. The first equation says that x minus 3 is equal to 0, or the second equation uh, says that x minus 9 is equal to 0. We solve both equations, so I'm going to add 3, add 3. We wind up with x is equal to 3. Over here I'm going to add 9, I'm going to add 9. We get x is going to be equal to 9. So the roots of this equation the roots are x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 9. All right. And this next one, we'd write uh, 2x plus 7 is going to be equal to 0. Or 2x minus 7 is going to be equal to 0. We solve each equation, subtracting 7 from both sides. 2x is going to be equal to negative 7. We divide by 2 on both sides. We get x is equal to negative 7 over 2. And over here, we'd add 7 to both sides of that equation. 2x is equal to 7. And then we divide by 2 on both sides of that equation. And x is equal to positive 7 over 2. So the roots of this equation are x is equal to negative 7 over 2 and x is equal to 7 over 2. All right, so I'm not going to do all of these problems, right, but you could practice, you know, doing each one of these on your own, right, but they'd all be done essentially the same way. All right, so let's take a look at repeated roots. 
when two or more roots of an equation are the same number, the equation has repeated roots. So if we look at this first example, x minus 1 squared is equal to 0. First we write it in factored form, so x minus 1 times x minus 1 is equal to 0, right? Because <clears throat> when we have this power here, the base is x minus 1, so that's your repeated factor, and each of them has to be equal to 0. So we'd write x minus 1 is equal to 0, or x minus 1 is equal to 0, add 1, add 1, x is equal to 1, the same thing over here, <coughs> x is equal to 1. So we'd write, this equation has repeated roots of x is equal to 1. This equation has repeated roots of x is equal to 1. And if we look at this next one here, example B, we have x plus 1 times x minus 3 times x plus 1 is equal to 0. So we want to take each of these factors using that 0 property and make each of the factors equal to 0. So we'd have x plus 1 is equal to 0. x minus 3 is equal to 0. Or x plus 1 again is equal to 0. Subtract 1, subtract 1. x is negative 1. Add 3, add 3, x equals 3, subtract 1, subtract 1, x equals negative 1. So uh, this equation has repeated roots. This equation has repeated roots. At x is equal to negative 1. At x is equal to negative 1. And has a root at x is equal to 3. So you guys could try these examples down here, but they'd be done right in a similar fashion. And the same thing with these problems down here. I'm trying to see if any of these are different. Uh, nope, pretty much the same thing. So we go on to uh, the next part of our lesson. We want to be able to factor, uh, find the greatest common factor uh, of polynomials and use uh, the factor form of the polynomial to solve uh, the equation. So what does the GFC stand for? We know that that's the greatest common factor. Right, the greatest common factor. And you know what does that greatest common factor stand for? And the greatest common factor is essentially the largest polynomial that divides, let me write that. What does it mean? The GCF of a polynomial is the largest polynomial that divides a polynomial evenly. Polynomial evenly. So, you know, just a simple review, the greatest common factor of 20 and 48 the largest number that div would divide both 20 and 48 evenly with no remainder, right? That should be, what, 4, right? Because 4 times 5 would be 20, and 4 times 12 would be 48, right? So the greatest common factor of 20 and 48 would be 4. Uh, when we're looking at these monomials here, uh, the greatest, po greatest common factor of 3x squared and 6x would be, let's see, 3x. 3x goes into... 3x squared uh, evenly, uh, right, because 3x times x, right, would be 3x squared, and 6x would be 3x 
times 2. Right? So the greatest common factor would be 3x. So now we want to be able to factor out the greatest common factor. So when we do that, let's see, we have 12x to the third power, 3x squared. I just want to check something. All right. So the greatest common factor would be what? 3x squared, right? Because 3x squared times 4x would be 12x cubed. And then 3x squared times 1 would be 3x squared. So there's the factor form of that polynomial with the greatest common factor being 3x squared. All right, let's try a few more of those because these are quick. So 8y squared minus 24y looks like that would be 8y, right? Because 8y times y would be 8y squared, and 8y times 3 would be 24y. So there's the factored form. Uh, problem 10 looks like we would be able to factor out what? A 3z squared? And 3z squared times what would be 15z? That'd be 5z, right? Because 3 times 5 is 15. z squared times z would be z to the third power. And over here, this would be plus what? 4. Because 3z squared times 4 would be 12z squared. And essentially what I'm doing is, in my head, I'm using the distributive property to check my answer, right? 3z squared times 5z gives you 15z to the third. 3z squared times 4 gives you the 12z squared. Down here, we look like this would be 2m squared would be your greatest common factor. You'd have to multiply that by m squared to get a product of 2m to the fourth. And this would be times 5 to give us a product of 2m squared. Then our last one down here, uh, looks like you could just factor out an n, right? And then this would be 13n to the fourth minus 4, right? Now here we have a three-term polynomial, but even with that, right, you can factor out a greatest common factor. Looks like that would be what? What would divide evenly into 3, 9, and 12? That would be 3. And then what would divide evenly into x to the fourth, x squared, and x? Oops. Did that too quickly. All right, so that would be x. So 3x times what gives you 3x to the fourth? Well, that would be x to the third. 3x times what would give you 9x squared? That would be what? 3x. 3x times what gives you 12x? That would be 4. So there's your factored form. Now we want to be able to use these factored forms to solve equations. So we'll do a couple of these. Letter A, or problem A, greatest common factor of 2x squared and 8x. That looks like that would be 2x right, times x would be 2x squared, right, 2x times 4 would be 8x, we make that equal to 0, so now each of the factors has to be equal to 0, so we write 2x is equal to 0, or x plus 4 is going to be equal to 0, solve each equation, get x is equal to 0 here, solve this, we get x is equal to negative 4, so the roots of this equation would be the roots are 0 and uh, negative 4. Pretty bad and, but you can read it. This next one we have to do a step before we can factor. We'd have to subtract 15n from both sides of the equation first so that we have 0 on one side of the equation. All right, so now we have 0. But then we'd have 6n squared minus 15n is equal to 0. So we have to do that first step so that we write this uh, in, in standard form. Then we can find the greatest common factor, which looks like that would be 3n, I believe. 3n times 2n would be 6n squared. And 3n times what? 5 would be 15n. Right? And that's going to be equal to 0. And then we know that each of these factors is going to be equal to 0. So we'd write 3n is going to be equal to 0. You know, or we have 2n minus 5. 
going to be equal to 0. This equation we divide by 3. n equals 0. This equation at 5, at 5. 2n equals 5. And then when we divide by 2 on both sides, click, click. All right, we get n is equal to 5 over 2. So the roots of this equation are the roots are uh, n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 5 over 2. All right, we'll try a couple more of these just so you guys get the hang of it. All right, I'm going to come down here and do these. All right, so first let's uh. What do we have to do here? Factor out in A, it looks like. So A parentheses, that'd be what? A plus 5, right? That'd be equal to 0. And then A equals 0. Well, that's nice. <laughs> and then we have A plus 5 equals 0. Too fast there, Pilata. A plus 5 equals 0. Subtract 5, subtract 5. A equals negative 5, so the roots would be, the roots are uh, A equals 0, and A equals negative 5. All right, I'll do these other two. Uh, let's see, what do we factor out here? It looks like we could factor out a 3S. Parentheses s minus 3 equal to 0. So then we write 3s is equal to 0. s minus 3 is equal to 0. Divide by 3, divide by 3. s equals 0. Add 3, add 3. s equals 3. So the roots here are. Uh, x is, uh, oops, not x, <laughs> s. The roots would be s is equal to 0 and s is equal to 3. And the last one, we have to do that extra step here where we would subtract 2x from both sides of that equation. Right, and then that gives you 0. So then we have 4x squared minus 2x is equal to 0. Then we find the greatest common factor, which would be uh, looks like 2x. Parentheses, would that be? Nope. All right, that'd be 2x times 2x would be 4x squared minus, that would have to be 1 equals 0, right? Because 2x times 2x gives us 4x squared. 2x times 1 gives us 2x. That works. So then we have 2x is equal to 0. Or 2x minus 1 equals 0. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x equals 0. Add 1, add 1. We got 2x equals 1. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x equals 1 half. So the roots here, the roots are x equals 0 and x equals 1 over 2. All right, so that's our lesson today. Hope that's been helpful, and uh, we'll see you soon.